everyone. The government has announced a new education policy 2020, which brings about several major reforms in education in India. This pandemic has made all the educational institutions across the world to adopt teaching online. Education 4.0 is the new trend and it is aimed at improving the competitiveness of the industry. Bhatkar Education Trust, Sri Guru Sivindra College has taken a new digital initiative. Let's make the best utilization of this. I welcome the resource person for this, Mr. Srinath Pai and Vishwanath Pai. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Unnati, for a wonderful introduction. So once again, I welcome you all to Bhatkal Education Trust, Sri Guru Sudhindra College. The college is organizing a wonderful series of events on the occasion of Teachers' Day 2020. And out of four events, and one of the event is the virtual training program on Education 4.0. So the concept here is SWOT analysis of implementation of education 4.0 in teaching and learning. I'm Mr. Srinath Pai from Department of Computer Law Application. This is going to be the agenda of the session. So first and foremost, I'll brief you the motivation regarding selection of this particular concept then I'll uh, focus on what industrial revolution is all about and how industrial revolution has uh, given a positive impact on education 4.0. With that, we should understand what education 4.0 is in detail. Post that, we'll be focusing on SWOT analysis and the application of SWOT analysis in teaching as well as in learning. Hope I'm audible. See, the motivation behind uh, choosing this Education 4.0 is this particular report which you are observing on screen. The World Bank report, it says, low education outcome and poor quality of education are the biggest barriers to the fastest economic growth of the country as the young continue to be trapped in poverty. It means when you talk about any country, the country's development is directly proportional to the quality of education that we provide to the citizens of the country. So the report it shows whenever you talk about any sort of a country and if the quality of education is poor, automatically the entire, it's going to affect on the entire country's development. So it shows the importance of education and the need of education at this particular 21st century. Industrial revolution and the, as you know, every day we are uh, enjoying the different gadgets and the different sort of technologies. So before understanding what the current technologies we use and how it can be actually applicable in education uh, industries, in organizations, let us uh, focus on its growth, the development. When you talk about industrial uh, developments, so there are four phases we talk about. The first one is Industrial Revolution 1.0, where the people used to do the things through the manual approaches and because of the development of all the machineries, everything, uh, the mechanical equipments were point and the development has begun. So that is in Industrial Revolution 1.0. Then post 1.0, we talk about Industrial Revolution 2.0. The production was totally mechanized. So mechanical equipments were used for the productions. But at the same time, there is a need of mass production. And for the need of mass production, sort of production lines were developed and number of the quantities, production and everything has increased. People were not happy by that. In 1970s, when the computer systems were coined, people started adopting, using, applying these computer systems in various uh, industrial applications. It may be for the production or maybe for logistic and for different uh, other applications. So that particular age we call Industrial Revolution 3.4. In 2000s, when the artificial intelligence, machine learning, the internet and internet of things were coined, 
the entire the industrial development has changed the entire system of working has changed and the concept we call industrial revolution 4.0 and current we are enjoying whatever the new gadgets whatever the new technologies we all are enjoying the result the credit it goes to industrial revolution 4.0 currently many industry most of the industries have already upgraded from 3.0 to 4.0 and there are much and more industries which are uh, upgrading it to the next level this is called automation the age of automation where everything in the world is changing and uh, automatically in education industry in education organizations too we should adopt all these technologies and the new concepts when you talk about industrial uh, revolution so here there is a the first point itself it say, says change is inevitable as you know we can't stop the change change is continuous and as per the new requirement as per the market requirement as per the requirement of the people as per the requirement of the stakeholders we should come up with new concepts so the change is inevitable and as per the change as per the requirement we have to change ourselves and when you talk about this particular change in current century because of this technological evolution it is giving a positive result on this particular change earlier days the change is to happen in centuries but now currently the change is happening in terms of years in every agms annual general uh, the meetings of every the different organizations hope you are witnessing how the industry is upgrading itself whatever it was there in the last agm and the current agm there is a sea change in the entire system so this is about the change so change is inevitable every thing is changing in the world and automatically the education organizations should adopt the new changes when you talk about industrial revolution i'm linking it to education um, 4.0 now in industrial revolution when you talk about industrial revolution 4.0 there are lots of changes the company is has adopted and it is adopting the new technological things the new innovations and everything is happening and at the same time when you talk about the human resources at educational institutions because in it may be for a pre primary or for our primary or any sort of the education levels when you talk about a uh, higher education system also the students they study in the schools in colleges for 3 years 4 years 5 years but after that when they go to the industry whatever we teach for 2 3 years and what is required in the industry there is a huge gap and the effort has to be made to fill this particular gap some sort we call it as a digital divide here you can call it as skill divide whatever the skill is expected in the market and whatever skill on which we are training the candidates to the stakeholder there is a sea change and this particular gap has to be filled somehow so whatever the new technological innovations whatever new technologies are currently available in the market that has to be adopted so as per the industry requirement the education organizations should upgrade its standard the education organization should upgrade its level and so that this particular bridge can be gap can be filled so here on this slide you are uh, witnessing the five interesting points the first and foremost is demand led education than the supply led education so what is happening is currently if you talk about um, a classroom what happens is normally a teacher enters the class and delivers the lecture out of thing imagine a class of 50 uh, students were 49 may be interested in particular uh, concept and one student he may be interested may not be interested but because of that particular syllabus because of that particular environment the student has to study so here the thing is whatever the contents are framed whatever the syllabus is framed and as per that the student is learning but now in you talk about education 4.0 the system is changing as per the market demand as per the demand of the organization as per the demand of the audience as per the demand of the stakeholder entire system we are changing so that's the first key point 
the second thing is the competency based instead of the knowledge based when you talk about um 1960s so or 1970 even 1990s you can consider the educators the teachers we used to access the materials and that particular access the materials were not available for students access but now the change entire system has changed so we refer youtube we refer the different materials pdf contents from uh, the different uh, web engines from web sources the same sources same contents are available equally available for the students then what's the difference how this particular difference can be managed so the current education 4.4 4.0 it focuses on competency than the knowledge because the contents the materials the knowledge it's available everywhere but the way we present the way we inculcate it matters the point number 3 is on lifelong learning earlier learning was totally limited students or people they used to learn within four walls and when the distance education system was introduced uh, once again the system was totally liberalized but now currently the entire system has changed even iits iim and all other the we call uh, instead of excellence are providing the wonderful courses wonderful uh, the training uh, programs and everything through the virtual means there is no boundary and anybody can learn at any point of time so this is the speciality of lifelong learning and along with that the modular degree programs which in uh, the nep 2020 also you can witness much and more uh, lateral entry systems lateral exit systems so these are the new norms it's called it is the new normal which we have to adopt and this is the time to change then the last point it focuses on the emphasis is given on iq sorry it's given on eq than iq so these are the five points which focuses on what education 4.0 is all about now uh, let us let me uh, brief you regarding a few points which focuses on education 4.0 in detail the first and foremost is as i already mentioned learning can be any time anywhere we call 24 into 7 into 365 learning system so any point of time anybody can learn there is no restriction nowadays we when you talk about the admission criteria every year once the admission is to happen then um, the twice the different systems were method uh, the methods were done but now admissions are open throughout the year anybody can admit Uh, join any sort of course and they can learn remotely so these are the different opportunities which education 4.0 is providing traditional methods which all of us are uh, familiar but this particular corona we should thank this covid situation which has entirely uplifted the education system and we are literally adopting the digital technologies in the post covid situation almost when you talk about the classrooms almost the around 60% classes are totally the education is digitized but once the new normal it begins the situation is going to change it is not going to be totally traditional or it is not going to be totally on digital mode so it is going to be a blended system so in blended system what happens is it is going to be a collaboration of both the traditional systems as well as the digital system so in this way the students are going to learn the various things along with that the very important thing which i am going to focus here is flipped classroom the students is to come to class and being the teachers we used to train them on different skills but now the system has changed when you talk about a flipped classroom so here what happens is the classroom will be used for discussion rather than delivery here the, we are talking about two d's the discussion happens in only in the classroom but the delivery of the session it happens outside the classroom how it is possible if you talk about a particular session you can talk about a science photosynthesis those days we used to when once the student enters the class we used to uh, uh, brief the topic we used to introduce the topic and uh, we used to train the particular concepts to the students but now the system has changed the topic to be given to the students in advance 
the student will study the topic through the different channels either it can be audio video text or different sort of materials through the different channels the student will undergo the training at home or maybe at different places and the classroom is used actually for two way interactions where the students will enter the class with certain uh, knowledge of that particular topic and the role of the teacher is going to change from a teacher to facilitator so this is going to be the part and parcel of education 4.0 and by um, of course it's going to be an uh, interactive learning session than the normal uh, bb usage blackboard usage traditional learning system the point number 2 i'm focusing is personalized learning um the system has changed the trend has changed when you talk about a telecommunication system one uh, house there used to be a one landline where entire family used to access but now the system has changed everybody is having own identity own mobile phones because it's everything is personalized the same pattern in education system also instead of mass education so it is going to be a personalized education based on the candidates requirements based on the requirement of the student based on the requirement of a learner they will get the opportunity to learn from the teachers from the resources from the mentors which whomever they want so this is going to be the uh, system post covid sessions and the point number 3 once again another uh, interesting point in that there are three sub points students are free to choose the learning tools and techniques we used to follow set of uh, traditional methods for the delivery but now the entire system is going to change based on the students interest based on students availability based on the students requirement the tools and the channels can be opted byod it stands for bring your own devices those days were the days where we used to restrict mobile phones we used to restrict all electronic gadgets to the educational institutions but now the time has come where we have to force the students because to free the things right to free uh, the touchable things what we should do is we should force the students to carry their own devices the electronic devices to the classroom so that they can learn because everything is going to be a self paced learning methods so these are the three points the point number 4 is on pbl systems those were the days where we used to focus on the textbook methods but now the entire system has changed the students are very interactive they are very intelligent and they want to learn the things through the projects so pbl is going to be the future of learning methods maybe a short term project or it may be for a long term project usually we talk about project when it comes to higher education but now the situation has changed and the entire system has changed as per the new uh, education policy the students are going to learn the programming coding when they attain the 6th standard itself so in that way the entire system is changing and being the teachers being the educators being the academicians we have to upgrade ourselves to this new system the point number 5 is hand on learning because the students as i already mentioned it's both the points point number 4 and 5 are totally interlinked um the students they want to learn the things through project based learning and this is the time where we have to being the educators we should force the students to learn with these methods because practical exposure is very much essential than the theoretical things because theoretical any time however they want they can encash it but practical exposure is very much uh, essential exposure to the uh, data interpretations um, the numbers the reasoning skills we call mathematical reasonings aptitude that is the new um, system of learning with this we have to focus on uh, the three more points the, as i already mentioned individualized customized uh, personalized learning so automatically the individualized assessment we used to conduct the term and examinations and we used to assess the students in mass based on their performance but now the continuous assessment systems are to be adopted and individualized assessment the iq of one particular student x and y may be totally different you can't uh, assess the students based on the same norms what we should do is we have to adopt the new skills and based on the students iq level and based on the system based on the course 
the new method of evaluation to be planned. So that is point number seven. Point number eight, it focuses on curriculum and update. When you talk about curriculum, as I already mentioned, industries are upgrading it to industry 4.0 and being education institutions, we should upgrade. In case if we can't match also that is fine, but at least we have to reach to that particular level. So curriculum has to be upgraded. Curriculum has to be updated regularly. But what is happening currently? We don't ask the learners regarding the syllabi. We ask only the authorities are going to frame the syllabus. But in education 4.0, the system is going to change. As per the learner's requirement, the curriculum to be adopted, it to be upgraded and it to be delivered. So that's point number seven and point number, uh, sorry, point number eight, excuse me. Point number nine is students will become more independent in their own learning. And as I already mentioned, the teacher's role is going to change and teachers will become facilitators. Our duty is going to change from teachers to facilitators We'll be there to provide the facilities. We'll be there to give the guidance to the students than the delivery because the system has changed. The entire, the interest of the student has changed. We may be thinking why this particular change when we were the students of a primary or a high school or it can be any part of any phase of uh, education system. The method was totally different and but now currently the entire system has changed. For that there is a reason, so this is one more challenge for all of us, the classroom changes as Danville 2016 he mentions these five changes, classroom layout is going to change, it was actually predicted and now because of this COVID, post COVID classrooms and to maintain the social distancing automatically the classroom layout is going to change, it won't be like a of the normal traditional classrooms, the entire system is going to change. That's the point number one. In classrooms, we used to uh, consider virtual realities, augmented realities, and all other aspects only in a few part of online uh, training programs by some uh, tutorials or something, digital learning system. But henceforth, virtual uh, learning systems, or it can be virtual reality, augmented reality, all are going to be the part and parcel of the classrooms and that too especially when you talk about uh, concepts like science to deliver the concepts easily to the students so these are the nice platform which we can uh, utilize flexible assignment as i already mentioned flexible assessment now we are talking about flexible assignments based on the requirement of the candidates based on the subject requirement based on the market requirement the assignments can be fine-tuned and we can make it flexible and along with that um, accommodate multiple learning styles, different uh, learning uh, channels, the methodologies, the pedagogy as per the pedagogy requirements it can be used. And finally, the last very much important thing is the MOOC system, the massive open online courses. Nowadays, the learning has literally changed. As I already mentioned, anybody can learn at any point of their age from anywhere maybe in a Mumbai or maybe in any sort of a remote area the person can learn if there is no network to then it is well and good no issues the people can download the content and they can uh, read so the person in a metro area and the person in tier three cities they can access the similar the same method of learning so this is going to change the entire education system and that too, especially when you talk about a country like India, where around 60% population is there in the rural area and 40% is there in the uh, cities, uh, it is almost uh, it is the need of the heart because the students at rural area will get the equal sort of facilities what the students of metro and other cities are getting. The three pictures which I love the most is on uh, the screen the AR, VR and the 3D printing. Augmented reality, henceforth you can find the student sitting in the classroom with a tab or you can witness uh, teachers with the tab in their hand and uh, explaining will be very easy. The giving uh, exposure to the students of practical things will be very easy through AR. 
VR virtual uh, reality where maybe uh, especially when you talk about a history historical aspects uh, imagining the things and presenting is very difficult so under such circumstances through this VR and AR methods it can be done and the one more thing is the technology the special technology 3d printing it may look upward why this kind of 3d printing is used in classroom it's yes true nowadays in all uh, currently not only in higher education even in the primary and pre-primary education in classrooms we are witnessing the 3d printing where objects the students are going to create using their systems and the similar object whatever they design using the uh, the digital uh, tools such as either mobile phones or the, any sort of gadgets or a computer systems that can be printed through the 3D printing machines and that object can be created. So this is going to be the future classroom and being the educators we have to upgrade ourselves because this is the need of her. Now for past 20-25 minutes I am talking about what education 4.0 is and uh, why uh, and how it is changing the entire system but one question it always arises why why this particular change is happening in the entire industry in the entire market the reason is you can just go through this particular slide in the last row it is clearly mentioned generation alpha and next to that it is mentioned 2011 to 2025 now you can just concentrate on the second row of this table generation name and birth year you can just screenshot this and you can refer it later a wonderful slide which is which shows the actual reason for this particular thing because when we were the students and currently when we deal with the current students there's lots of changes we find there is a huge difference a sea change the reason is this particular thing 2011 to 2025 the students those who born in, in, in this particular uh, years we call it as generation alpha students now based on your birth year you can just check which generation you belong if you are from 1980s you can just check that in between 1975 to 1985 that particular uh, age is called the Zillennials then we call generation Y we call generation Z and generation Alpha and currently if you are a teacher if you are teaching for a pre-primary or a primary or high school or PU UG or post graduation you will be in this particular bracket you are dealing with the students generation alpha i am not going to talk anything about generation alpha let us talk about generation z the student those who born in between 1996 to 2000 or you can concentrate on till 2010 see the requirement of the students the need of the students and the thing what we are providing there is a gap this particular gap is creating this is the, this gap is the reason for all sorts of difference of opinions and the issues you can just go through the slide see the point number one hands-on experience learning the students expectation is they want hands-on learning they want everything personalized but what we are doing we are pressurizing and we are training them on a particular thing the boy or a girl may be interested or not that is secondary as per the syllabus, as per the requirement, we are delivering it to the students. So that's the first difference. This is the requirement. As I said, I'm not talking about Generation Alpha. You can just search, you can Google. Generation Alpha requirement may be totally different. But here I'm focusing just on Generation Z. When you talk about even Generation Z, the requirements, they need hands-on experience. And being the educators, I'm not committing on all, but most because we are totally a restricted environment because of which we can't allow them to get this hands-on experience this is the one difference they welcome challenges I'm not going to comment on this particular things uh, educators may accept may not accept this kind of new challenges so it depends on individual group discussions 
which they love the most the current generation i am talking about interactive learning environment the students expect they don't want any sort of boundaries they don't want to sit on a desk they don't want to be in a classroom they don't want to learn they want to get the exposure through all digital means when there is a youtube when there are very uh, video tutorials when there are um, animated uh, tutorials to train one particular topic maybe photosynthesis or any particular aspect why they expect a teacher who is standing in a classroom with that particular time limits and the training we using a blackboard or through the normal lcd screen just think let us think from the students perception let's think from students view point because now from past 4 5 months all students are totally busy because of the their number the usage hours have increased we can say it has um, more than uh, 10 times it has increased because we are not allowing the kids to go to the ground we are not allowing them to step out of the home so the only option what is available with us is the electronic gadget either it can be the internet connected laptop or a personal computer or a the handheld mobile device so why i am talking this is students the kids are already upgraded now being the teachers this is the time to upgrade otherwise it's very difficult to lead difficult to deal with this kind of the students in days to come the students they expect full access to the resources they want the unlimited information and they need online forums and many more things i could list out only few points here so this is the requirement of generation z and what the way we are thinking the way we are providing it's totally different so here this slide it tells you about the 21st century uh, teaching skills interdisciplinary knowledge that is very much essential for every teacher if you are a maths teacher you can't restrict yourself only to the mathematics you should learn something else where you should know how to interlink if you are a tech savvy tech savvy it is by default everyone may be a language lecturer or a, from arts or humanity do how to be the tech savvy so interdisciplinary interdisciplinary language knowledge is very much essential the new strategies the teacher has to learn change yes for that there is no option this is the time to change the new technologies and especially um smack we call the social mobile analytics and cloud so these are the things where the teacher has to focus so this is the last uh slide i guess so before uh, before i conclude see the top 10 skills the students need to have in 2020 why i am focusing this particular slide is world economic forum has clearly mentioned what are the different skills the student should have in 2020 now we are in 2020 just imagine when students are reached to this particular level what will be the duty responsibility of a teacher students are upgrading students are learning new skills and now it is the responsibility the duty of all the teachers to adopt the new learning methods the new pedagogy the new methodology and to become the tech savvy the last slide of this particular the discussion a very interesting slide with the even the source is also mentioned in 2020 your students start to teach if you are a teacher if you are a educator if you are an academician you can witness this we are in 2020 our students are going to teach whom earlier days we used to consider we are the teachers they are the students we are the people who are here to deliver the things and they are the people who have to receive the things that's it but now the system has changed our students have upgraded themselves and they are there to teach us so your students will start to teach you right so this is the time to upgrade if you talk about 2040 the scenario is going to change in another 20 years as i already said the change is not happening in centuries the change is happening in years 
So in 2040 itself, the change is going to be the students of your teacher start to work. It means the students of our students, they not only teach their teachers, they also tell them or they also exp they will get the exposure of what working system is. See, this is the practical thing of the new challenges what every teacher has. And this is the time, dear, the, I can say the family members, because all are in a sailing in same boat. So we all are teachers, the educators, the professors, the academicians, the educationists. We all are sailing in same boat. The common problems, the common issues, we all are uh, facing here. So this is the time to adopt new skills. This is the time to change ourselves. Hope the I could uh, cover the different aspects of what Education 4.0 is all about and its actual uh, impact. Once again, I thank all the uh, participants for your uh, active participation and I thank uh, uh, Bhatkal Education Trust, Sri Guru Surindra College for uh, conducting such kind of an innovative and informative uh, workshop. And uh, okay, I could cover only a particular portion, the introduction of what Education 4.0 is and its relevance. There's one more part here. Education 4.0 in teaching as well as in learning in detail and for that we have prepared a SWOT analysis on strength, weakness, opportunities and threats and my colleague Mr. Vishwanath Bhatt is going to uh, deliver a session on that. So stay tuned. Once again, in uh, I wish you, uh, I wish all the teachers a happy teacher's day in advance. So thank you. Take care. Namaskar. Hi, my dear wonderful teaching tribe members. Uh, this is Vishwanath Bhatt from Sri Guru Sundra College, Bhatku, the Department of Management. I wholeheartedly welcome you all for this wonderful session. Before I'm going to continue the further part of Education 4.0, I would like to extend my gratitude to Mr. Srinath, my fellow colleague, who has given a wonderful insights about Education 4.0. Before I'm going to continue the further part, I would like to share what are the concepts I'm going to deal now. Education 4.0, both in teaching and learning part of you, that means teachers and learner parts of you, SWAT analysis, SWAT analysis of education 4.0, both in teaching and learning, and finally, transformation in education sector. First, Education 4.0 in teaching. 21st century is completely a competitive era. From Gurukul system to, till today, we have seen a lot of transformations, a lot of developments, a lot of improvements. So, compared to that traditional form of teacher to till today, the teacher is not able to give all the information. He should be served as a great guide or become a mentor to the stu student world. Then only it is more effective and a great learning process by the way of uh, effective teaching. Then teachers must be have a better forward thinking, advanced thinking. He must be always curious about every aspects of surroundings. If I find something new, he, he must be always curious, try to learn it and very important must flexible. Flexible nature which will help to face the crisis very easily, face the problems very easily because when a student environment or institutions, the flexibility is very essential to contribute better way from teachers part of you. That's why these are the qualities are very essential. More than teachers must be a great learner. Our educationists, our lecturers used to say that all the time, if, if you want to deliver 30 minutes class, then we must prepare more than one and a half or two hours. That means every teacher always should be learn many more things. He always try to grab the more information and knowledge. He also uplift his skills. 
that's why for that better learning he he can deliver better and when he deliver better towards the students definitely he can elicit that's why for for invite such a great qualities of a teacher education 4.0 is very very essential education 4.0 in learner point of view that means student point of view which allows learner to grow with knowledge and skills that's what gandhi ji said education means not getting the informations or the knowledge it must be imparted great skills those skills are helps a lot to each and everybody in the life and that is the great advantage of education or the need of the education ultimately output of the education is imbibe great skills and the student will experience learning by doing this is again a very essential requirement for example if we want to read a one page we can't recall the same but same concept by playing method by doing method or some activity method definitely it is very easy to retain and he or she can recall the same things that means the learning process will be great impact by method of doing most of the institutions they are implementing but by the way of or the modem of education 4.0 this learning by doing helps a lot it also changes the traditional way of taking examination because for best example in this covid 19 lockdown period most of the institutions or universities they have conducted the exam through online mode from traditional system to modern system that is present scenario not only learning process but also examination process also transformed so for such great transformation education 4.0 helps along with that digital learning digital learning platform is the best example for every learners and learning happens through the virtual environment virtual environment means for example the student who is studying in uh, urban areas correct so he want to experience the forest or different wild animals it is not possible for him. this virtual environment virtual reality concept in industry 4.0 when we implemented in education 4.0 definitely we can create a better virtual environment and everybody we can experiencing the reality that helps a lot it may be video or audio modes and all new technologies for example if you want to see that lion this virtual environment we are able to create lion naturally and he or she can experience this experience learning helps a lot every student and that memory that knowledge can be that skill can be retained for longer durations ultimately education 4.0 is the gateway towards the industry 4.0 already all the industries they are getting advantages of advanced technology 4.0 if we implemented in education sector it is benefited for both learners as well as teachers also swot analysis most of the common students are aware but swot means s stands for strength w stands for weaknesses o stands for opportunities and t stands for threats if you take any one concept or any one object there will be flip side for example matchbox correct matchbox we can use for better purpose lighting the lamp correct but at the same time we can use this matchbox or distract the house or distract the family like that education 4.0 also the two dimensions there is some advantages there is some disadvantages strength and weaknesses opportunities and threats now swot analysis in teaching strength first which serves the student as per the specific needs the great strength of education 4.0 which serve as student as per the specific needs of each and every students which helps a most personalized learning attentions in school 
for example primary class 30 to 40 students are there why the system has restricted minimum 30 to 40 means the kid or the student must be get individual attention because every individual are always different very creative to consider that point personalized learning attention is very essential for that sake education 4.0 helps a lot then communication with the student more and even effective manner education means it's a communication between teacher and the learner correct so if, if we have extension of a better and effective communication then education 4.0 helps a lot then reduce the usage of energy for example in banking sector at the time of 1990s when they are planned to implement the computerization everybody objected it but now without computerization we cannot imagine the system of banking that means all this digital mode reduces the usage of our energy and it helps a lot and very important it is more convenience for use and getting a very organized and well informed manner these are the great strengths of education 4.0 but on the flip side it also has some weaknesses one is digital literacy is required when we want to deliver through digital mode or education 4.0 mode industry 4.0 then every teacher must be become more tech savvy he must be more digital literacy otherwise it is very difficult to deliver then very important issue of privacy and data security i just mentioned about the bank but at the same time most of the banks are facing the crisis of privacy of the data and privacy of the informations that is also applicable to education 4.0 when we implement it there, there may be chances of leakage of data of student or the teacher or the, it may be disturb the privacy of both teacher and student this is the problem and very important lack of physical control for the data when everything is become digitalized we can't able to control over the data somebody can misused these are the weaknesses when it's come to the opportunities effective future need is very very helps then quick solution of the problem quick solution of the problem that means in every teacher facing many problems in day to day uh, scenario day to day conditions so it helps to secure or get the pro solution for each and every problem advantages of distance education nowadays distance education is very useful for all the uh, employees those are employees they want to improve their uh, status educational status or need to get some higher degrees it's very essential it is very useful for those situations it is a great advantage of distance education education 4.0 create an a vital opportunity for such kind of great distance ed education mode and inflow of foreign students resulting in huge revenue this education 4.0 helps to get foreign students most of the universities they must have foreign students as per the ugc norms and if you get foreign students it may be in institution also they can generate the revenue very easily for such conditions is very useful and finally improved efficiency and quality the ultimate goal of every education uh, education is to improve efficiency and quality on all other reasons or on all other mode this 4.0 helps to improve efficiency and quality of education especially teachers efficiency and quality that is benefited to learn at the same time threats outsourcing threat in banking sector for example atm center security 
has given for outsourcing and there is a great loss for regular employees there is no generation of employment that can be happens in education sector it gives an opportunity for outsourcing and it's a great threat for every teaching fraternities and it also contain various hidden cost or if you want to uh, implement education 4.0 we need to install various new technologies new softwares it demands some cost hidden cost and very important health hazards 4.0 is based on modern technology and when we depends upon more modern technology it's definitely create lot of health issues for example we are talking about the screen time the students can maximum get adults can be will get maximum to us screen time more than to us which creates lot of health issues and elders also that's why this technology over dependence on technology creates lot of health issues these are the problems when it's come to the learner point of view first point strengths which improve the students learning outcomes already i mentioned ultimately the goal of each and every institutions educationist or parents they are expecting better outcomes this 4.0 helps to improve the student learning outcomes learning is personalized to students interest every student is different every student is become more creative and he is not common for others that's why learning is always based on personalized interest then he can give more attention and he can learn better way for that purpose 4.0 is the best solution and makes learning more accessible the student of a remote area he can access the knowledge of or access the course of any part of the world for global environment globalization it helps education 4.0 helps a lot learning can happens any time anywhere at any place or any pace for example the high iq students they can learn at once in regular class mode but low performers low iq students they not able to understand it very easily that is the biggest drawback or the limitations of tradition form of the uh, education but here the student he can higher iq he can avail that content avail the knowledge avail the skill faster way those who are very poor or low iq they can get the knowledge or the skill according to their pace that's the great advantage for learners point of view and technical skills today every part technology is existed for without technology there is no life today that's why improve such great technology is essential for students and 4.0 helps a lot let's come to the weaknesses less scope for extracurricular activities education means not and two way communications between student and learner and just to share the informations but also other extracurricular activities are essential because education is demands the students demands 360 degree greater growth that means personality development such personality development only happens by extracurricular activities not only education traditional form of education that's why extracurricular activities there is no greater scope for example music yoga or sports this kind of activities it's very difficult correct right? that's why extracurricular activities traditional method a traditional way of teaching is more useful which, which can be gives a lot of scope for it that is the biggest advantage and lack of interest by students when the system is become more flexible when you have given opportunity to the students their own pace their own time if student is going to be learn then he may not be show the interest there should be some restriction there should be some discipline that is not possible by 4.0 that is a great weakness but it's come to the opportunity which and has a greater knowledge and easy to access the resources the student can access the resources anytime and it's become more flexible 
and quick solution of the problems. Every student, for example, maths, the student has some problem. He can't able to understand the concept. This education 4.0 to get the solutions very quickly and diverse field of students because one student, for example, science background, a commerce background, they can share the knowledge very easily, which results in sharing of new ideas, new thoughts in between the students because various students, they are interested in different subjects, which helps to share the, their knowledge, their skills. It is, uh, helps a lot to uh, improve their skills, improve their knowledge, and ultimately the output will or outcomes will be very high. At the same time, the threats, addiction to the technology. Already I said that there is a saying, too much is always too dangerous. When we are spending more time with mobile, it's dangerous. As the same, addiction to the technology, the 4.0 can force to addict the technology. Too much of addiction is very dangerous. Either student point of view or teacher point of view or institution point of view. And compatibility reductions. This education 4.0 reduces competitiveness. That means every sector today we are going to face on observing the competition. That to education sector, without competition, student cannot do nothing. But this education 4.0 not create such kind of great competitiveness and that is a greatest threat for 4.0 and it is very, very expensive. Already I mentioned, the 4.0 demands a lot of new technology. To implement, we need to depend on softwares, other equipments. It's very expensive. It is not a cup of tea of every institutions, especially government institutions. It's not that easy. Step by step, we can uplift, but at once we can't convert the traditional form of education to directly 4.0. That's why the expense is one of the biggest threat. It's not that easy. Only the Western institutions, they can, or some well financially sound institutions, they can do, but it's not possible for everyone. So these are the threats. Now we can move ahead for the next part. That is transformation in education sector. How education 4.0 helps a greater transformation? Already I said, every sector is facing the transformations, shift or changes. Change is always inevitable, correct? So education 4.0 initiative, which will be helps all education institutions, all education stakeholders, and effective economic and easy communications. That's why in education, that is major part, especially education, communication is very essential. The most of the education takes place by the way of communications. When communication is become more effective, education is also effective. For example, teachers to learner, learner to teachers, that's one place of communication. Second one, administrator to trainer and trainer to administrator, that's another form of communications and teachers to parents and parent to trainer. Yes, teachers to parent and parent to teacher, teachers or trainers. In these three level of communications, when it's become very effective, then learning has become very effective. It's benefited for the student. So having such a great communication channels, extension of communication channels, education 4.0, is helps a lot, which give an a vital role, which play a vital role for such great communications. I can give an example how education 4.0 made a great impact. COVID-19 during the lockdown period, in the first two months, the one of the well-known edutech firm, Baijus, I think everybody may are aware or uh, heard about this by Jews, they uh, generate the revenue of more than one billion dollars. That means in financial year 2020, the company posted revenue generation of more than 2,800, almost 370 dollars. That is indication that 
almost 100% growth rate they have witnessed every sector maybe transportation or hotel all the businesses when they are facing the crisis during covid 19 period this particular sector this particular firm able to generate such kind of great revenue means we have to adopt 4.0 in educations that is a great opportunity last the technology only can shape educational institutions with special focus on teaching and learning we have to upgrade and update day by day already i have mentioned today's technology it will be updated tomorrow new technology will be takes place to fill up such kind of great gap between traditional to modern means that digital divide is the great solutions which helps a sustainable growth in this modern era 21st century is completely a digital era a digital era digital system if we implemented in education its standard will be improved and ultimately all the stakeholders of education is they are benefited finally there are ample opportunity for development technology itself a great strength when we have used as a strength keeping a positive note everything is possible you might have an question sir you have mentioned about the uh, swot analysis weaknesses or threat yes every concept has its own merits and demerits we have to be focused on merits and we have to be keep in your mind when we are utilizing the technology correct so that is the main intention to uh, analyze the concept in swot form and when we implement it in better manner we need not worry about its weaknesses we we are always aware about it. that's the main concern having said that i would like to conclude my presentation by a great educationist a uh, former president dr a p j abdul kalam he said thinking should become a your capital asset no matter whatever ups and downs you come across in your day to day life this quote this his statement is very apt for present scenario yes today we are facing lot of ups and downs in education sector we should always a great thinker positive mindset then this education 4.0 is an, a great platform great opportunity for everyone having said that thank you so much for listening and in upcoming days definitely will come up with more such great concepts technical aspects of educational 4.0 with more practical exposure on behalf of entire sjs parivar i would like to thank you all and i wish you a happy teachers day thank you so much okay dear educators i hope this session was very informative i take this opportunity to thank the resource persons mr shinath bhai and mr vishwanath bhai on behalf of shri guru vidya degree college and all the participants i wish you happy teachers day in advance good day to all thank you thank you and all